So Quinn made a tweet. He says, 10 out of 10 would refund again, hashtag Starfield, parentheses, this game is an unfinished buggy mess. So you see there's the order confirmation right there. Ordered from Steam, uh, NZ $184 in real money. Uh, that is $100 because obviously he had to uh, get the refund. Uh, New Zealand dollars, a little bit different. Uh, anyway, so he did get his money back and Starfield is no longer in his library. He has moved past that. And he made a tweet and he said this. He said Diablo 4 is better than Starfield and Diablo 4 is bad. Wow. So let's see. Uh, I saw people linking me some clips of Quinn. Oh, he beat the game? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's horrible. That happened to him. Like, D4 is better than Starfield. Ooh. And D4 is bad. Yo, there we go. That Ooh. is what I call success. That is what I call wow. success. All right, to be fair, it was falsely advertised. It's not, the game isn't even fucking finished. It is a buggy mess. And yeah, I, let me tell you. Jesus, bro. So he actually got his shit refunded. In content creators and they're turning them into shills. It was, uh, they, they are getting content creators and they're turning them into shills. With their, you know, by, by doing this fucking early access Good boy behavior gets the good the good boy biscuits. Who talked about this two years ago? Who was it? I said this shit was gonna happen. Like I did. I said this shit was gonna happen because it's common sense. Routine. And uh, I don't know, we need to call out the companies for doing it. And we need to, I, I, it's just such, it's it's just so toxic. And it's also so anti you guys, the consumers, like anyone who's buying the games. Because guess what? They're basically just rigging. It's like rigging the reviews. It's rigging the public perception. I'm so glad to hear Quinn say this. I'm actually so happy to hear him say this because he is the only person that I've ever heard speak up about this. And I'm going to replay it just so you guys completely understand the context. I'm going to I'm going to go to the full VOD so you can listen to what he's saying. I barely talk to me. The community manager that actually does talk to me, he also, I mean, I don't want to be talking to me. He, he also, I mean, he will still reply, but not publicly. I, I am blacklisted. Like, no, I am absolutely blacklisted. I'm not trying to get back in that club. That's the whole thing. I fucking hate that. I like to just play a game and then I just say what I think about a game. Imagine. And that. I feel like this is a toxic thing that is happening in the gaming industry right now where these large AAA game companies, are, they, they are getting content creators and they are turning them into shills with their, you know, by, by doing this fucking early access, good boy behavior gets the good, the good boy biscuits. Routine. And uh, I don't know, we need to call out the companies for doing it. And we need to, I, I, it's just such, it's it's just so toxic. And it's also so anti you guys, the consumers, like anyone who's buying the games. Because guess what? They're basically just rigging. It's like rigging the reviews. It's rigging the public perception. Because people trust content creators. They trust streamers. And if the streamer's saying it's good, they're going to be like, if I say a game's good, you're going to, generally speaking, a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh shit, I might play that. Or if someone else says a game's good that you watch and you enjoy, guess what? You're going to consider playing that. I don't think so. You will. Yeah, that is how it works. That is literally how it works. Like, there's a reason why they call streamers uh, influencers, okay? Because they, they, they use influence. That's the reality. That's the reality. And if, they're turning, and, they're, and if they're able to do that, I don't know, man. I called this shit out to... Fucking years ago and I said that this was problematic and it was bad for consumers and now finally two fucking years later somebody else finally sees the big picture 
they finally see the big picture of why it's a bad idea and why it's consumer unfriendly that some people get access to things early whenever they have a positive relationship with the company. And the way that it is bad is because those people are the ones that put the first impression in the minds of the viewers and they define the conversation about the product. And these individuals are used as marketing tools and there is a positive profit incentive for them to provide favorable coverage to these video games and to other things as well. Again, this is an overall issue. I apologize for the flashbang, but this is the fucking reality. It is called access journalism and it is older than video games itself. And I said this shit was going to happen, and people said, oh, companies should be able to let people do whatever they want. They should be able to do whatever they want. Well, of course they should be able to do whatever they want, but that doesn't mean that they should do it. It's problematic. It puts, and, and it negatively hurts. It hurts the streamers, what, for eight hours? Oh my god, I think I'll live. But who does it really hurt? You. It hurts you. Because the person who receives the early copy, who then has a positive incentive to provide favorable coverage to that video game, now is going to provide that favorable coverage more than if it was done equally. And whenever that favorable coverage is applied, and you say, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna drop the fucking Benjamin. Maybe I'm gonna spend a hundred dollars. Well, guess what happens? Todd got you again. It just works. And it does. And that's why the companies do it. I said this shit was gonna happen. It's happening now. And it will continue to happen. Thank you so much, Quinn. Quinn is the first person I have ever heard speak out against this. And to ever explain the problem to the audience. Like, fucking massive W for Quinn. This is, I get, I have never had anybody else, I've never heard anybody else say this. No, I can wait. Early access journalists are paid to support their paycheck. The point is that people that are given early access... And if the early access is only given to certain individuals, then it creates a winners and losers situation. And it is favoritism with like streamer politics, sure. But like, you know, you manage that and you play the game. But the real people who lose out is the audience. And I'll give you an example of how this happens. Reasons you should not trust Metacritic scores. Hashtag Starfield. Metacritics went down to 86 today uh, due to the So Video Games podcast review 65. They played five hours, one mainline quest and one to two side missions and called it quits with some of the worst takes I've ever seen. So this is the uh, this is what they said about Starfield. Starfield is a pretty good time. It's basically Fallout 4 in space with some sci-fi and procedural generation. Thank you, ChatGPT. I really appreciate that. Special episode Starfield, the chat review. Here we go. It's so funny. We both played about four to five hours. I was pretty close to five hours, if not a little bit longer than that. These are what you like to call hardcore gamers. Ooh, hardcore gamers right here. There it is. Uh, number one, I hate the city. I hate the way you've been in it. Right, right, right. Uh, um, it, I'm good where I'm at now. Yep, there you go. And uh, we're flipped because I don't like a lot of power. And by the way, this is again negative uh, review. Join your negative. Don't we really think this is a system? This is what happens. Imagine getting paid to say a good thing about a company. No. I have no problem with people taking sponsorships. I have no problem with it because I take sponsorships. Oh, and by the way, guys, I will still take any early access copy I can get because you know what? It's beneficial to me and I'll always do it. However, it is harmful to the industry and you should get mad at the companies for doing it. 
However, this is what I'm trying to say. Is that whenever you have a sponsorship, you have to disclose that you are doing an ad. A hashtag ad. And because of that, users are now able to know that this is a this is a, a sponsor, this is a promotion, and it is not supposed to be taken as an objective review in the same way than if it was not sponsored. Taking sponsorship is one thing, but will you give your honest opinion about the game? I did. I've given my honest opinion about the game 50 times. That that's I've given it 50 times. To Ubisoft's credit, they give early access to everyone, even those that have regularly criticized them. I don't know if they do that. If that's the case, then yeah, W's for them. Have you been scared of taking an early copy of a game knowing it would be bad? No, not really. Uh, I don't really do a lot of that anyway. Uh, yeah, that, that's really what it is. You tiptoed around the idea of saying the game wasn't good? The reason why I tiptoed around the idea of saying the game wasn't good, the people that are criticizing me for that are so fucking stupid, they're dumber than the people that like the game. So the reason why I criticized, or sorry, why I didn't really go and shit on the game immediately whenever it first came out, it's very simple. It's because I don't think that I'm the target audience for this kind of a game. I've never really enjoyed Bethesda games, so I didn't want to completely shit on a game whenever I played it the, uh, you know, quote, wrong way, and I just went off and did what I did. I, I didn't think that was fair. I didn't think it was fair to give, like, a review of the game and say this is a terrible game after, like, seven hours of playing it. I, I feel like if you want to give a review for a game, you should beat the game. That's my benchmark. If you can't beat the game, then you can't give a review. It's that fucking simple. You can give your first impressions, you can do all that stuff, but the truth is that my first impressions playing Starfield on day one were pretty good. I flew around in the ship, I went around, I killed pirates. The problem wasn't the first day, the problem was the second and the third day were the same as the first day. And I'd say even that they were worse because I wasn't making as much progress then. So yes, of course I didn't shit on the game early on. And I know that it would have been very popular for me to do that, but that wasn't the way that I felt about it. So whenever people get mad at me like, oh, you're not just shit, you're not shitting on this, you need to be shitting on this more. No, I don't shit on things to shit on them. I shit on them because I don't think they're very good. It's not that simple. So I don't know, like, yeah, one, one, day, uh, one day game Andy's, yeah, exactly. Do you need to eat dog poop to know it tastes bad? Um, no, but this isn't dog poop. It's a lot more complicated than that. You could say something like Gollum is dog poop for sure, but there's a lot of games that you don't really even know that they're problematic until way, way later down the line. Like New World was a great example of this. New World was a great experience for the first, like, probably 20 hours that you played the game. And then after that, it fell off a cliff. So the real problem is a lot of times that you don't really run into the problems that games have very early on. Diablo 4 is another great example. Both of these games had a tremendous and amazing new player experience, and then once the kind of meat of the game took hold, that's whenever they really turned into garbage. You see what I'm saying? Now, what would I rate Starfield so far? Which is, this is not a review. I think it's like a 5 or a 6. I don't think it's a three. I think it's a five or a six. Get mad at the company, not the influencers cashing the checks. You're both wrong. You are. You, they, they are both wrong, but the company is the one that can stop it. And the content creators will always find a way to, uh, you know, people, you can't rely on somebody not taking a big paycheck for something like this. Uh, I think it just makes sense. Yeah, especially in like such a competitive industry. It's a lot better than Forspoken. Yeah, I think it is a lot better than Forspoken. So that's why I didn't shit on the game initially. And, and the reason why also is that, like, I didn't really understand the game that well. And so I wanted to understand the game, and I wanted to figure it out. Because I don't like shitty on games that I don't really understand. I just don't think that it's very... Uh, it, it's, it's just like... It's like getting mad for the sake of getting mad. What are you doing getting mad like this? What the fuck, right? So that's how I see it, man. And if people like this game, base building and ship building, it's a 7. Yeah, it's going to be a... There are some people that think it's a 10. And I'm happy for them. Let's see what the uh, the other ones are. Uh, and so I'll, I'll look and see what, uh, uh, what else Quinn said about the game.
that Bethesda didn't allow themselves to be criticized. Minimized uh, information about their game and the subreddit is defending them. But Chris Wilson came out before the league. He let his consumers uh, critique him through a medium of streamers, giving consumers as much information as humanly possible to make decisions on how they spend their money. And this is how the subreddit attacked them. Yep. Bro. The way that they marketed this game was like some endless possibilities, fucking crazy, infinity story, do anything you want. So I played more of the game off stream, like I promised I would. And I have obtained, I think, three or four of the powers that you get from the temples. I cannot express what a boring experience that was. It was probably the stupidest thing I've ever done. All you would do is you talk to the guy in the tank top, like the black guy in the tank top, at like the satellite, and then he says, go over there and get this one. And then you come back, he says, oh man, I've been working out a lot. Oh geez, okay, we'll go over there and get the other one. And then you just have that, that happens a couple more times and it's done. And you go to a, another uh, fucking, uh, another moon or another planet, who cares whether it's a moon or a planet. And you're running through the planet. There's nothing anywhere. It's a barren fucking wasteland. There's like, over in the corner, there's like some the like, stupid level five mob that like tries to attack you and you kill it and then you don't get anything for it. You're going on a wild goose chase trying to do like a scan to try to find the different uh, anomalies, but then the new anomalies don't spawn whenever you do the scan. So then you have to teleport back to the ship in order to reset the quest progression to get the next spawn point for the next anomaly. You do that four times, then you finally fucking find where the temple is, and the process of finding and, and getting the, uh, the, um, the power is running around in this zero gravity area collecting sparklies. And then you do that enough times, and you run into a ball, or sorry, like a halo type thing, and then it, your, your guy's like... And then you've got to go talk to Vladimir again. And then you go over there, and he says, oh, you like doing that, Moon? Oh, you did? All right. Well, <laughs> I got good news for you. There's another Moon. And you just got to do it again. You do it again? Yeah, what the fuck? And there's just, there's no gameplay to it. It's just like a, a mindless, brainless, content devoid, like marathon to nothing. I, I can't even, I, I couldn't even believe that it was happening. Have you ever played a Bethesda game? I played Oblivion a little bit. And I didn't really play Skyrim. No, but like, I don't think that that is a good argument. That, well, Bethesda games are always stupid. Well, Bethesda games are always boring, so... That's just how it is. Yeah, I feel like that's the worst argument that you can possibly make. Does it make any sense? Oh, well, they're always boring, so it's okay if this one's boring. What the fuck, man? And also Skyrim, they made Skyrim like over 10 years ago. What are we talking about Skyrim for? The things you're doing are boring, but that doesn't mean everything is. So let me get this straight. I have just somehow in my 17 hours or 18 now hours of playing the game, I have just by happenstance managed to do only boring things. And somehow, it seems like everybody else is apparently doing the exact same thing. There's a lot of fun content in the game, to be honest. Like what? Fun is subjective. Yes, I agree. Fun is subjective, and people can enjoy it. But... 
I think that it's pretty fucking boring to go and get the powers from the different moons. I do. I think it's super boring, man. Shipbuilding is the only redeeming unique thing this game has? Maybe. You can tell from early video footage based on the combat design that people who developed the game didn't know what fun means. Yeah, I don't know what to say. The main story shit in the world is barren? Yeah, there you go. We'll read the rest- we'll look at the rest of the Quinn clips. People say you're playing wrong or coping? Well, here's the thing, right? Is that if you can- if so many people can so easily fail at playing a video game, maybe it's not everybody else's fault, you know? Wait. Why? Why would his crosshairs go red right here? It's a ghost? In combat? No, no, because like, look. Now they're not, uh, they're not red. See? Because he was in combat all this time too. Why doesn't he just shoot him? Reload it. Just shoot the guy. What What's he the doing? Fuck, I'm reloading <gasps> fucking five times! Just shoot him. I'm fucking molding! Yeah, I don't see the problem. Just shoot the boss. Anyone who gives this game a 10 is full of shit. Like, you're full of shit. If you give your game a 100% rating, like, you are literally full of shit. It, it's, it's objective. It's not subjective. It's, no. There are so many fucking bugs in the game. Even if you think this... No, no, Quinn is right about this. Like, the AI is objectively bad. Like, the character design is objectively bad. Uh, like, yeah. No, he's right. Story is amazing, and you love the aesthetic, and you love that you know yeah. those are your favorite type of graphics. You know, because you maybe you do, maybe you prefer pixel, you know, graphics. Maybe you prefer, maybe that you just love the 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 weird, uncanny like Skyrim 2000 fucking 12 look of like characters' faces. Maybe you enjoy like super boring fucking ultra thing. bland, ultra tame storylines. Maybe yeah. You know, even all that, even if all of that is like 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, like all that subject, you know, your favorite games is like the weird Destiny 2 guns with the ultra fucking um, you know floaty combat with the bullet sponges maybe that's you just love that yeah. even if that is true even if yeah true reviews are combinations of facts and opinions not just opinion yeah mysterious and delve into the mysterious of the unending cosmos okay cool. jesus christ all right where are we all right all right, where are we? Options. Settings. Gameplay. Uh, difficulty. Oh, Here's he it. put it on very easy because of the, um, the ship fights? Was that it? Yeah, I'm not surprised about that. Fucking... I, I don't know, dude. To be fair. To, to be fair, Cyberpunk did the same bullshit to me. I'll be honest. Cyberpunk did the same dog shit to me. Do you know what? I have to blame this game. It made me respect Cyberpunk at least a little bit more. I respect Cyberpunk more. At least that game had, you know, the, <laughs> I was more engaged, and on top of that, it had more grit. And it had more soul. I don't know how to describe it. It was it had, it had more soul and grit. Where I, I felt like, oh yeah, this is fucking Cyberpunk. Yeah, this is like, yeah, okay, I can see this. Like... It, Starfield has made me want to play Cyberpunk. It felt realistic. The universe felt like it was. It wasn't like deliberately uh, made to be some tame. Um, they just they just let it rip, you know. The like, yeah, you I start off and you're update. like fucking like trying to like you're, what? Are you, what do you like saving like a fucking human traffic hooker like cyborg lady? And it's like fucking body parts. I mean, shit, that shit was fucking good. 
Todd and Sweet Little Lies. Yeah, so Quinn was pretty negative uh, about the game. I'm not really that surprised. I'm really not. Uh, I, I I think that more and more people are going to uh, going to start to realize that they need to make the next the next game much smaller. No, I don't think so. I think that what they need to do is they need to just like playing uh, playing Starfield reminded me a lot of playing Oblivion. And I don't think that's a super great thing. These games were 20 years apart and the game feels basically the same. Oblivion was fantastic. I'm gonna be real guys. I think all of the combat in the Elder Scrolls games sucked. I think it sucked, that's it. So if, the, if, if literally playing the game sucks, well then I think that's a bad thing. That seems like a really big problem. If actually playing and, sh and swinging your sword around in the game is shitty, I think that's a big issue. Captain Hindsight looking at the past from 2023. Bro, I said it back then. That's why I didn't play it. That's why I stopped. That's why I didn't play like Fallout and those other games because they just didn't feel good. Like, what are you, what are you thinking? And again, I'm talking about like, yeah, you wouldn't be able to have a 20 year context and thus you're looking from hindsight. Think about it. So yeah, I'm very glad to see Quinn talking about this. And uh, overall, I agree with pretty much everything he's saying. And uh, I think more people should call this shit out. And I also just don't really like the idea of, um, you know, people getting favoritism and how that favoritism is going to affect the way they review games. Do you think space games are basically harder to give interest to because you don't know what could be good or add planets to make it more alive? So why is it that, like in my 18 hours of playing the game, I never once encountered an enemy that was like, oh shit. I never had like that, um, you know, seeing the tree sentinel moment. I never had that seeing my first dragon in Elden Ring moment. There's no wow factor to the game. That's because From Software didn't develop the game. But it's not just From Software. There's a lot of other games that are like this. Game needs dragons? Well, well, what if there's like a space dragon? I mean, there's no reason there can't be a space dragon or something that's like that. You know, like, wh why is it that you can't have like a giant sandworm? Why can't you have a giant sandworm? That would be sick. Yeah, it would be sick. Yeah, or a space whale. Or how about a whale that like is in sand? It uses the sand as like it's uh, as like it's water. That would be really cool, man. If Borderlands has that. Well, I'm not talking about Borderlands. I'm saying like this is Starfield. I feel like that's part of Bethesda's design. They don't really add much in WoW. Uh, how much WoW and battles and combat? They create really good stuff to look at, but are bad or making enemies that are scary. You really think they create great stuff to look at? I mean, I don't even think the game looks that good. Like, it looks okay, but it's not like this is some sort of, like, crazy thing where I'm like, wow, this is amazing. It just looks okay. Asmund's ship after a week on Starfield release? Oh, fuck off.